Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744, and today, guys, we're discussing about one of the biggest clubs in Italy, the downfall of this club, and that is, of course, Juventus, man. Juventus, the downfall of this team, man. And today, I figured I got a Serie A expert on this doodle. Uh, doodle is my Serie A fan. He's, like, probably one of the my biggest fans I have in my community. I wanted to get a Juve fan on for this, but, you know, my Juve friends have been busy, so, you know, that's why I didn't get them on. And so I feel like Doodle is probably the best alternative. You know, he's like, you know, you're such a big Serie A expert. You know, you're like a Serie A enthusiast. And uh, we have to discuss about this Juventus downfall, man. Because I obviously, as a rival fan, because you're obviously an Inter fan, you must be loving this. But from, an, uh, from a neutral point of view, it is bad. Like, I mean, do you yeah, think... Like, I mean, I've always said this. I pretty much said this also, like, about Milan. Like, obviously, downfall about Milan. I mean, that was just, you know, you could talk about that all day. Like, I, and I think Juventus' downfall is definitely like, not as bad as Milan, Milan's and Inter's. Oh, yeah, for sure. Obviously for not as bad. However, you know, Juventus, whatever it might say, I mean, 36 league titles speak for themselves, right? So, like, this is still, yeah. to their standards, it's still, you know, not good enough, if we're being honest, like, objectively speaking. So yeah, and yeah, and, and we're obviously gonna go by season by season, guys. Um, but I just want to ask you a quick general question before we go by season by season. Do you think Juventus' downfall is actually be objective? Obviously, is yeah. bad for the league, or it's it's because I I do hear because it is kind of weird because I do hear that Juventus is the most hated club in Italy. So do you think it's do you think it's a bad thing for the league, or it's actually a good thing? So here's the so I think there's like two sides to it like i'll say that obviously the when juventus declined that obviously made the league you know much more competitive you know before last season there were three champions three like three different champions in three years in syria now for a better or worse now the thing is however is that juventus i mean if you also look at it obviously we're going to get into it but the thing is when when it when italy got that fifth spot for the champions league if we're being completely objective Juventus didn't like exactly like have a lot of impact in it because Juventus for in Europe for many years as we're going to touch on have been very poor now but that being said though a strong Juventus is still as much as I really don't like to say it's still like beneficial for the league as a whole because like strong Juventus it kind of forces you know Milan to be better it kind of forces Inter to be better it kind of forces others and it goes all the way back back and forth as well like Juventus and we're obviously just going to touch on this, but like all I'll say is, remember when Juventus was winning the title like nine, nine in a row? Like obviously that's yeah. how did it. And I mean, thing is, while they obviously made two Champions League finals, got outclassed in both, if we're being honest. But at the same time, what you can say is the argument is that they were facing two of the most talented teams assembled in history of football, 2015 Barcelona, 2017 Real Madrid. However, the issue was besides that, Juventus, like, yeah, Roma and Napoli were challenging them sporadically, but let's be objective here. Are Roma and Napoli same standard as Milan and Inter? Like, they're not. Oh, yeah, for sure, no. For sure. So, no. like, that's obviously, like, I just think that Juventus, because, of, like, while they were definitely heavy hitters in Europe, they just never had that. Because the reason why back then La Liga was so strong, for example, is because Real Madrid and Barcelona kept always challenging themselves, so, like, challenging each other, just pushing each other. And that also forced both of them to be so good that the rest of Europe could not compete. And Juventus just did not have that much, you know, that kind of you know, competition. And that's why Juventus just, while they got close, they just never got over the line. Sort of like how PSG are in Liga, let's just say. Sort of how that kind of a situation, really. Yeah. I think it's interesting because for me, um, from a, a objective point, from a neutral point of view, I do think it is bad for Juventus. Like, because Juventus is like one of the most popular clubs in Italy. Yeah. And for them, man, they're also big worldwide as well. Like yeah. it's not just in Italy, they're big worldwide. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's yeah. it it does look bad in the league that they haven't been great in the league and even the Champions League as well. So yeah, I, mean, I, I think you, it, Yeah. Like okay. if you look at Juventus's record in the Champions League, it's out of they've made nine finals. They won only two and lost seven. Like it's That's just insane. it's kind of crazy to think about. Like nine finals and like only two one, like it's insane. Yeah, so yeah, for Juventus, man, we're, we're going to discuss about this, and maybe the, also the downfall of Juventus also maybe in some ways correlates with the Italy national team as well, yeah. because you know Juventus has been the best team in Syria. That also I think we should also bring that up actually, rare in the win video, because I think that's also relevant into this. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll probably briefly touch upon it, but obviously we're not going to mainly focus yeah, about that. But you know, we'll probably yeah, yeah we'll probably. Uh, 
briefly talk about it. Yeah. Anyway, so let's start with the first season, man. Let's start with the first season, 1718, guys. I'm going to bring up the Wikipedia page as a reference for us uh, because that is all the details. And, yes, yeah, so we're going to start with the 1718 season. So as you can see right here, the 1718, let's just do a quick overview. Then we'll talk about the competitions itself. So, obviously, Allegri was a coach that season. Uh, Agnelli was the chairman. The stadium was Allianz Stadium. And then they won the Scudetto. But even though they won the Scudetto, guys, look at this. I'll show you guys in a bit. They won the Coppa Italia. They came super. Uh, they they came around up a Super Coppa Italia, and of course they went to the Champions League quarterfinals. So if you actually look at the league table, they only won the league by four points, which is yeah. pretty crazy. And if you think about it, as I said, like if you think about Napoli when they won the title, won it on ninety points. They they got ninety one. Like they got more points. They obviously by one point, but they got one point and they did not win it. Like that is the levels that we're talking about here. That's how. But that was like. But you cannot lie. Like Napoli, I remember that season. They beat Juventus 1-0 at the Allianz Stadium. And not only did they beat them, they completely, like, dominated them. Juventus just, Dang. like, got shaken. I've never seen Juventus. Like, they were – it could have been 4-0. Like, you, Napoli were just so wasteful, but Koulibaly scored, like, a late goal. But, like, they completely, like, dominated Juventus that – like, obviously, Juventus won the first game in Naples. Higuain scored. Oh, my God. Like, I remember the outrage back then. Like, if you were social media for Napoli fans, it was, the outrage was crazy. But, <laughs> but like – if you think about like Juventus, yeah, but Juventus had a lot of like it looks like ninety five points, yeah, but like there were many games I remember that season. Juventus just in Serie A as well, like they sometimes just got through barely. Like I remember they lost to Lazio two one, like they you and they drew through Inter like nil nil at home. Like I remember that game, we actually could have won that game. We actually had some chances that game, um, and like they had all these runs, but there were also some games where they were just cut like they were just kind of barely getting through. Like they were, and these big games, especially like Napoli, Juventus, you know, and even the games they won, like there were some games where it was kind of looking like they were just quality was kind of just getting them a bit over the line, if it makes yeah. sense. But obviously, it's still 95 points, you know, one Coppa Italia, a lot of things. But like, if you look at the overall like season, the overall how Juventus were, like that season, it still kind of looked like at some points, and obviously, that's kind of what you need to win the league. Like, the best we always say that the champions, the league champions, they don't usually always win pretty. In fact, the ones that win ugly are the ones eventually that win the title. And Juventus, that's why they won so many league titles because they had that aspect in them, like they had that capability of pulling wins out of nowhere. However, yeah. as every season went on, it was kind of becoming more and more unsustainable. And obviously, we're going to get into that to that later. But if you think of like yeah. they, they were so good that season. But that season, I would say it's kind of, you know, when signs were kind of showing that maybe, maybe not next season, but maybe in few years, this Juventus dynasty was probably going to end. I think this was the season where it was kind of looking a bit apparent. Yeah. Then obviously we're going to touch on the other competitions, but we're, we're, we're going to mainly touch about the Serie A and the Champions yeah. League because that's pretty much the main focus, yeah. the main two competitions. But, you know, we'll obviously talk about the Supercopa and as well. And, and I think it's season guys. prior. Obviously, I'm not going to talk about season prior, but season prior, they will beat Roma to the title by four points as well only. So... These wow. two seasons, that was like, it was kind of beginning, you know, it was kind of, you know, a bit, bit tough for them, a bit difficult of a season for them. Still. Yeah. So, yeah, they lost the Super Copa Italia 2 3. Yeah, it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah. You know, they even if it's Milan, they beat Milan 4 0 in the Copa Italia final, I'm pretty sure. I remember. They beat like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And now yeah. let's talk about the Champions League. Yeah. So, I Champions mean, the first dog, uh, yeah. <laughs> the first match day itself, right? <laughs> To be yeah, fair, the thing is, to be fair, I remember like this, I actually remember this game. I actually think this game was kind of like, it's it was kind of like a revenge match for Barcelona. Because if you remember, if anyone remembers, prior season, Juventus actually beat Barcelona 3-0 and then tied 0-0 and knocked them out. So this was, so in a way, this is actually reverse. <laughs> it's in <laughs> reverse, yes. It's literally yeah. reverse. But I remember this game, like I remember some of these games, like you can see, like they got through the group, but... It was like not the most comfortable way. If you look at the results and everything, it was definitely yeah. not the most comfortable fashion. Thing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then the round of sixteen, they got past Spurs. But here's the thing: they they tied at home. That's not that. They was were two nil up at home. They were two nil up at home, and they tied it. They they went like if they somehow tied it, then one nil. They were losing one nil to Spurs. It just as a Chiellini would say, it's the history of the Tottenham. <laughs> the history of the Tottenham, where it just. Kind of like, but as I said, like Dybala and Higuain quickly scored. Like that was not a convincing Juventus performance, but you know, that's what I'm saying. They got through. I'm pretty sure it's the next round where, you know, it becomes 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all remember this, right? I remember, like, I remember this. Like, the reason I remember this is because I know you're a Barca fan, so this is probably going to upset you. But that same week, like, literally, like, literally a day, like, after, like, the – I'm pretty sure this was, like, after the second, like, I'm pretty sure it was this, like, but that same week, there was basically – if Juventus did that comeback against Real Madrid somehow – that would have been two Serie A teams doing a comeback, miraculous comeback on two La Liga Giants. Because if you remember, obviously Roma oh, did yeah. the comeback that same week. So that was yeah. kind of, you know, that was the energy yeah. up there. But this obviously didn't happen. Obviously, some people still debate whether it's a penalty or not. I don't want to get into that. I don't know if, like, I remember all that. But, like, no. the thing with that was, like, obviously losing 3-0 at home, you know, that's still, I think, it still happened. And Juventus, that game, were very poor. Like, they just weren't. And the second leg... They just kind of like woke up and you, I would argue that second, like, I think that was U.S. best performance that whole season. That second leg was their wow. best. Goal. Like, I think in my opinion, that was probably, and many would say that was probably their best performance of the season, but they just could not get to it. And I personally think since then, they just always had this in their mind that something like this, like they can get close and they can still like lose in the end. I think, I feel like mentally that kind of had, it's kind of in, stored in them it just feels like that's how it is yeah yeah the, and it's, we have to also put in context this is real madrid real madrid i would say it's but like real, real madrid beat them for one in the final prior year so i think that also yeah. played oh part. yeah 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 I, it pains me to say is real madrid are one of the biggest clubs in the world they're probably the biggest and i think champions so, like, league is obviously their their playground let's be honest it's just, <laughs> yeah if you want a better on a team to win it that's the first that's the first team that comes to your mind so Yes. But yeah, I mean, Juventus I think, gave them a very good fight. And I think, like, even, like, when it was 3-0, I remember even Inter fans were, like, praising Juventus when they were making this comeback. And obviously, Roma, and I, I remember, like, Roma that whole week. But obviously, when that happened, I mean, when Ronaldo scores that penalty, I mean, it was a shock. Like, the Buffon, like, uh, so many, so much drama happened there. And seeing Buffon just then. And I mean, honestly, personally for me, and it's kind of off topic, but, like, obviously, I think, like, uh, Buffon is one of those players that I feel like deserved the Champions League at least once in his life. Like, that's kind of the thing. Oh, yeah, and he yeah. just never got it done with Juve. So, that's also another yeah. thing. Yeah, so, I mean, for this season, I, I if I had to give, like, overall rating before we move to the next season, I would say this is, like, it, it's a it's a bit of a, it, it's kind of weird. Is that results-wise, it's a good season. But if you actually look at performance in all competitions, it wasn't really that great. I, I mean, yeah, like, again, like, even, like, let's be honest. Yeah, they nearly made that comeback, but they still lost 3-0 at home. Like, you can't just look over that, can you? Like, it's still yeah. cool. So, and, like, obviously, was, yeah. 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 So, what rating would you give out of 10? Let's I think, well, I mean, they won the league still, barely, yeah. but still. They won the cup. They nearly made the – I think it's a solid 8 out of 10. Maybe I would say 8.5. Maybe an 8.5. Like if they got to a yeah. semi-final of the Champions League, I would say nine, nine, nine out of ten. Now, obviously, they won everything. That's ten out of ten, right? If they won like a treble, or yeah. Something. But I think it's eight point five simply because they nearly made that comeback against Real Madrid. I think eight point five out of ten, probably. And to be fair to Juventus, they they only they only they didn't lose that many games. They, they, yeah, they didn't lose that many games. It's just the problem was, you know, some lost. games that they lost or some games that they drew or like. When they won, they were kind of just scraping by. But that's at that point, like if you win, who cares really, right? At the end of the day, what well, that's what that matters in the end. Now this All right, season. Now. So this let's get one thing out of the way. Now Juventus this season won the league much more comfortably, if you look at it, like much more comfortably. And honestly, it would have been more they just dropped points the last few games of the season. Like they obviously won it much more comfortably. However, once we touch on upon other competitions, that's I think when people realize that this season was not as good as it might look on the surface. Yeah, and obviously, um, this was the first season with the man himself, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. See? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so obviously, there was a huge expectation for the season. I believe, right? Like Juve coming into the season, a lot of people thought, okay, you know what? They're gonna obviously they're gonna win the league because remember, Ronaldo was signed not to win the league because obviously they were winning league titles without him. Yeah. They signed Ronaldo for the Champions League itself. Yeah, and that was the ultimate objective. So and, I mean, yeah, and we will talk about the Champions League in a bit. But Juventus this season, man, even with Ronaldo, actually, I want to see how many goals Ronaldo scored this season. I actually, want to look I think I, I know he was like, I think he scored like in Serie, like, twenty-eight goals, twenty-eight 20 goals. goals in all. Yeah, twenty-one in Serie. Yeah, yeah, I remember. 
Dang, that, that's a good record, I would say. Would you agree? Yeah, but look at love now. But look, there's an elephant in the room. Paulo Dybala. Oh, my. oh my god! Oh my! Oh my! The, I think this was the season. This was like the beginning. Like I know next season Dybala is a bit decent, but this was kind of the beginning of a slight decline. Like I mean, five goals in Serie A. Moise Keane scored oh, six my. goals in Serie A. Like, uh, like look at that. Like it's pretty poor i think i think yeah and like if you look at the goals overall you kind of see just how dependent we juventus were on cristiano ronaldo for goals and i think that kind of yeah. played that kind of bit them like i think that kind of played the part for how they performed elsewhere because i mean yeah yeah i'm not i'm not i'm gonna say something kind of kind of controversial here um I believe Ronaldo was probably the best thing that happened to Juve, but also maybe the worst thing that happened to you. I actually made a question of the day about this like two, two days ago. Like I asked everyone, and like everyone said pretty much what they said was like you on the field, like on the field, football wise, Ronaldo was good, like productive, like especially that oh, final yeah, season, like Pirlo season when we get to it. Like on the field, I think Ronaldo overall was good. But now the off the field, now I get that wages, you know, that's what Juve, Juventus gave him, right? That's what like that they gave him himself. But we're, it's it just gets a bit it just gets a bit messy from then on like it just like I think but obviously Coppa Italia you see three 0 against Atalanta I mean yeah it's not yeah. Bad. I don't remember if he played or not I don't think he played that game but he regardless like three 0 like no like I, I remember that. actually actually Atalanta when did Atalanta start peaking so he Atalanta might... finished fourth in 2017 finished like seventh in 2018 this is the season he finished so it's like that kind of like 2017 was kind of like when they were becoming relevant 2018 they kind of slowed down but because of European football because of European football they kind of slowed down but then they got like this is the but still like three nil for Juventus like that's still poor that's still poor. yeah yeah okay now let's talk about the Champions League let's talk about the yeah. Champions League so of course Juve won the league by how many points let me just look at so 90 points 11 point margin yeah. but as we said as 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 you can see right here they dropped a lot of points last couple of days so yeah. they it would have been a comfortable margin yeah so you know but now it's the Champions League because that's the important thing because that's what Juve really care most about this season yeah this and this group see, man right? I remember like I remember like that like I remember the Valencia game, Ronaldo red card. I remember that they pulled it out. Yeah, yeah. Beat them Juvent Juventus, then Man United. Yeah, but look at the thing is when they lost that two one against Man United. Let's be honest, this Man United. If many, I know this is a long time, ago, but let's be honest, this Man United was a chaos. Well, like, this it was terrible. Mourinho was on his hot seat. I'm pretty sure he got sacked like not long after, like after this. Yeah, game. yeah, he got sacked. Yeah, yeah, he got sacked. Yeah, so, this I United team was horrible. If you remember, like just how they were. Yeah, doing. it was. And they lost, and they won. Like they barely beat Valencia at home. Then they lost. Yeah, I guess they qualified since then. But young boys still like. like it, but like, if you see their overall performances in that group, it wasn't the Very most convincing, was it? Like it, it just wasn't really the most convincing, despite them popping it. Like yeah. Uh, then we get to round of sixteen, and they lost two 0 to Atletico Madrid the first yeah. leg. And and I actually want to ask you this question: Do you think they would be? Do you think they would have made the? Do you think? Yeah, did you think they would come back to second leg, or you didn't think so? Um, <laughs> I did. Be, uh, the thing is, it felt, it kind of felt like you saw like when they lost, and after like you went like Ronaldo just talking about how oh he has five champions in Atleti Zero. It kind of felt like, yeah, this he's probably scoring a hat trick, isn't he? Like it kind of, it kind of, <laughs> kind of felt it. Like it kind of felt like that. I kind of like felt he took like, it personally. He took it personally. Yeah, he took it. And the re reason is like Ronaldo against Atletico Madrid. I mean, you can write oh, how yeah, many, yeah. Like, how many times has he scored hat trick against them? Especially like, I can't. You kind of felt like the thing is, once you were made it one, then once Ronaldo like made it one, I was like, yeah, this is they're they're gonna come. Back. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was it's pretty over, man. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, crazy, man. Ronaldo, man, Ronaldo, the man himself scored a hat trick. But you were kind of saying that you favor to do the bare minimum. They do the bare minimum. Yeah, but that by. game, I remember that game. Like Federico Bernardeschi, he made a career out of that oh, game. That, he, he was amazing that game. that game. He was amazing that game. Yeah, he was amazing. Every single U.S. fan, when they talk about it, like they always say that he that one game, like that's the only game like he's ever like actually done anything in for them. Like he literally just yeah. turned like he was just cooking that game for some reason. I don't know why he just transformed that game. Yeah, and now we get to the quarterfinals. Now, Whoa. before we get to the quarterfinals. Let me ask you this question. Is it is it bad for Juventus to lose to Ajax? Here's the thing. Context. Now, obviously, a lot of you remember Ajax knocked Real Madrid out. We all remember that. Yes. Now, here's the thing, though. Juventus losing at home 
in the second leg, I think that holds a bit more weight. Now, if this was like an away game and they lost, it would be like, okay, well, it's an away game. It's a home game. And the thing is, they led in that game. Ronaldo yeah. led both games. They actually led both games. I remember that. Ronaldo, like Juventus in that first, like against Ajax in the first half, they led. They scored like on last minute in the in first half. Yeah, Ronaldo scored. They were controlling. And then they just conceded and they nearly lost that game. But they came out of there. And then Ronaldo obviously gives them a lead at home. But after that lead, and this is where, and this is the where Ale- Allegri, this is, I, I personally blame this on Allegri, Allegri, this type, because when they went 1 0 up at home, he just sits back. They just sit oh. back and they're like, okay, let's just keep this 1 0. And then not long after, like right after, like six minutes after, I have to equalize. And then it's just bombard and just back. It just becomes weird because Juventus just begin crossing to Ronaldo continuously. Their game plan is completely out of the window. And eventually, the league scores the winner. What's funny is this, a lot of people say this goal pretty much got him to move to Juventus a season after. But, I mean, that game, Juventus were just kind of, like, they were just lethargic, especially that second half. I remember, they were just lethargic. They weren't really doing anything. Like, they weren't pushing for it. It just felt like the goal was coming for Ajax. And he came in, in the end, you know, Ajax deserved the win. That's how it was. Yeah, you know, see, see, I, I agree with you. Like, for me, the thing is, like, it for the for me, the thing is, it's no shame losing to Ajax because that Ajax team was incredible that season. Yeah. Like, they were one of the, they were amazing. You know, they knocked out Real Madrid, they knocked out Juventus, and nearly made the Champions League semi, uh, nearly made the Champions League final. Yeah. We're not, we're not gonna get into it, but um, I just think for Juventus, man, losing at home though is bad. It's losing at home is bad. It's unacceptable. See, if it was other way around, it would still be bad, but it wouldn't be as bad. Yeah. Because I still believe Juventus shouldn't be losing to Ajax. But to be fair, the Ajax team was really good. Yeah, I mean, I predicted Ajax to beat them because they beat Real Madrid. I did have them. But I thought, what I thought was going to happen was, I remember, I thought I had you Ajax winning at home and then just getting a draw away. Like, that's what I had. It, it pretty much was the other way. It just happened kind of different. But, like, I just think when Juventus got that draw away, deserve it or not, it's a draw, and they led at home, I feel like if you're doing that, you have to see it through. I personally think yeah. you have to see it through. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you think you, that Juventus team was good enough to win the Champions League this season? I think the thing is, you know, what's funny is they would have got Spurs in the semis, right? So I don't think they would have beat Liverpool in the final. Like, I don't think that would have happened. I don't no, think. yeah, they don't, beat, they don't beat Liverpool. Like, I think what I predicted, I remember I said, like, when semifinals happen, right? I said uh, whoever wins between Liverpool and Barcelona will win the Champions League. Like, I even said it's in quarterfinals, and that happened. Like, I think that was pretty evident. I don't think they would have won it, but I think, I mean, Spurs could have knocked them out. They knocked, they knocked Ajax out, so you never know, like, what could have happened. But I think I think they could have made the final, but I don't think they would have won it. Like, I don't yeah, think yeah. they would have won it. And, and you, know what the, you know what the crazy thing? We were just looking at the statistics earlier. Ronaldo, look at the second place. Dybala with 10. There's 18 goal difference. That's crazy. And Dybala, hey, like, look at that. Like, he scored, like, it says he scored five goals in Champions League, but let me tell you this right now. Those five goals that he scored, every single one of them was in the group stage. So in yes. knockout stage, he disappeared. He 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 was gone. Like he was completely non-existent. I mean, I mean, to be to be if, if we're being fair, pretty much the entire Juve team disappeared. Yeah, I mean, I mean like, actually, <laughs> if you think about it, Juve scored five goals in knockouts. All of them were Cristiano Ronaldo because he scored three against Atleti and two against Ajax. So that says a lot, right? That speaks volumes. And I think it's the thing that Juve also didn't realize that, okay, Sonny Ronaldo is amazing all for the Champions League, but it wasn't just Ronaldo that won Real Madrid's those Champions League. It was a, a collective effort. Yeah. You know, it was an entire um, team. Ronaldo was like that insurance policy, let's just say, like, you know, that kind of a guy, you know, the X factor that, you know, he was that clutch factor. And the thing is, he was yeah, doing he- with Juve, but if you look at Juve's squad, they were just so reliant on him, especially in the Champions League. And it makes sense. Yeah, it's Cristiano Ronaldo, so I get that, but like, Dybala disappearing, Mandzukic not adding anything. Like others, just like, like I remember, like Bonucci, especially that against Ajax. Like the way he just, the way he just lets Van de Beek just go through him and equalize. Like I remember that. Like that's not what can Ronaldo do about that, right? Like he can't really do much about it. Yeah, and the thing is, like it's still a team sport. Then this is an individual. Yeah. This isn't like this is. A I mean, this they is a made the comeback basketball. like three 0 Yeah, but like obviously defense has to play well. I remember like they shut Atletico down, but 
I just think that overall, like as a collective, I just think there were still some holes, especially against Ajax in both legs. They were just yeah. kind of relying on the novel, just get them over the line. Yeah. Okay. So how would you rate this season? Honestly, I give this like a six, honestly. Maybe it was honestly six. six, maybe, maybe a seven because of how comfortable they won the league. But like let's be honest, right? Quarterfinals again, like you lose in quarterfinals. Like, yeah, it was close and all, but like, yeah, it's Ajax was on good form, but like like you you don't even make like semis of Coppa Italia. You don't even make semis of Coppa Italia, you lose three nil to Atlanta. Like, I don't think this was a great season. Obviously, this was Allegri's yeah. final season. I think it kind of makes sense that it was Allegri's final season. Well, on his first stint, in his first stint. But I just yeah. think that it was still a good season. But let's be honest, it was this is really the season that I think was the beginning of the downfall. Yeah, beginning of the downfall. We'll get on to it. And for me, as, and for me, as, as much as I give credit to Ajax team, Juventus still should be beating the Ajax. They're still favorites. They were still yeah. favorites on the inside. I mean, let's be honest. I think that Juventus team was better than that Real Madrid team that season because Real Madrid team were chaos. I think that yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's still Real Madrid, but I, I'm just thinking like obviously Juventus uh, were a bit closer yeah. to beating them, but technically, but you know, it would still, I just think I would still favor, especially when you have Cristiano Ronaldo. Like, you have Cristiano Ronaldo, you spend all this money, you should, and you're expected yeah, you to should. at least make semis, right? So, yeah, at least make the semifinals, you know. I mean, as bad as Barcelona were that season, I want to bring this up, but I'll bring this bring real quickly. Messi still carried us, and we still made the semifinals. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I just realized we could have had a Barca Juventus final. <laughs> the Champions League, that would have been crazy. But, like, I, I just think that you, like, I just think they should have at least made the semis because they paid yeah. so much for Ronaldo. Like, you got to do it. Oh, and now this oh, season, nah. this was oh, like, man, yeah. I think this is the season where it's like the writing was on the wall yeah, yeah, from here on. Oh, like, from here on. This was a like terrible, terrible like, season. Obviously, people <laughs> say they won Serie A. Okay. They won Serie A. Now, look at how many, like, Coppa Italia, runner-up, lost to Napoli in the final. Like, let's look at Serie A for a second, right? Look, seven losses. Seven, like, now I'm going to say this I might just... look deceiving. Juve kind of dropped points after they won the title. So it looks like close, but Inter kind of like, I remember last season. I actually think before COVID, like before COVID, Lazio and you were actually neck and neck. Inter were inconsistent, like third place and not one. Like, like. So this is a bit misleading. Maybe you could have won it like more comfortably if they did not drop points after they won the title. But still, I mean, seven defeats. Like, still. yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Even Inter out of lots of lo lost fewer games. <laughs> yeah, and like Lazio only lost by one, like one more. Like still, yeah. right? I mean, and like, and let's be honest, eighty three points to win the title. I mean, yeah, that's pretty bad. Juventus. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. And there were some uh, bad yeah. losses. Oh yeah, there are uh, Milan, Milan four two away. Yeah, that's what I remember that game. I remember that game or whatever. Well, like that was for me, that was the game that changed the course of both clubs. I think that was the game when Milan were like announced that we're back. When Milan like we're, we're back, back. Guys. and Juventus are like, we're gone. Like it's over. Like that's that was for me, that was kind of the game that showed that one club was returning and one club was actually diminishing. Oh, that's yeah. I think I remember Zlatan returned. I think he became yeah, yeah, yeah. Pioli, right? like that was like Pioli's first season well he well they had someone else before then Pioli comes mid-season like yeah. you know results weren't the best but you know this is this is but for me this is kind of the game that kind of changed the trajectory of both clubs one went this way yeah. one went up one went down since then it's kind of been yeah. like that really yeah and then yeah I mean it was just terrible and now so the, the, the league title okay you guys you, you got won it but it was very it wasn't convincing you know? Yeah, I mean, you Inter were still, you know, the thing is that season we were just look at us like we got ten draws. We only like the draws killed us. It's not even the losses. It was, we were just drawing many games. That was the yeah, draw. yeah, draws. Yeah. yeah, and now we'll get on to the 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 champion Copa Italia. We'll look at this real quick. Man, they they lost the final to Napoli, and that was a terrible Napoli that season. That was really yeah, bad. yeah. That was a really bad. I remember that 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 Napoli was a chaos. Ancelotti got sacked that season. They Gattuso, they lost. Like, you should not be losing to Napoli in the final. You should not be losing to And they and barely squeaked through against Milan. Only on away goals. They only screwed yeah. on away goals. Lost 3-1. Yeah, it's Super Cup. Like, sure. But 3-1 against Lazio? Like, really? No. Like, and then, I, obviously, I mean, and then, and yeah, I mean, like, but, like, look uh, at this. Uh, like, every single game, they're, like, barely getting through. Barely. And then just still coming up short. 
Yeah, and then I believe Napoli did, he did finish mid table that season. So they he it, finished Napoli like didn't win that season. I'm pretty sure seventh, like one. I don't, I don't, like I remember, like it was like yeah, like one of them. Like yeah, I just want to let me just say this real quick. I think they and Napoli. Like, oh, seventh. Seven. Seven. Yeah, okay, there you go, like seventh. Yeah, so if Napoli, if if Napoli didn't win the cup, they probably wouldn't have got Europa League. Yeah, that's how it probably would have been, right? They or they would have to go through like qualifiers because back qualifiers. Then, but like yeah, yeah. this way, they got direct. But like Juventus should not be losing to that Napoli side. Like yeah, they should not. Like, if you look at it, it was, it, was the, it was a really bad Napoli team. It was a very bad. Yeah. Team. And remember, oh yeah, we we oh yeah, let's talk about the Champions League. Then we'll talk about Mertie, Sorry, yeah. but let's talk about the Champions League. Oh, okay, so Juventus they did well in the Champions League. I'll give you the one. They, they, they did yeah, well. they did that. I mean, they they bottled it against Atletico at first the uh, first game. We were two 0 up. But like after that, it was pretty pretty fun for them, right? They yeah, did fun it, was, it was cruise control. Now, now this is right here. This oh, right here. I'll be, I remember this game, yeah. That first game, like I think a lot of people were like, the thing is, when I actually think you were kind of lucky they only lost one nil. Like I remember Leon had many good chances that game. Like it was it yeah. was like and Leon that season were like not even that good. Terrible. They were terrible that season. Yeah, they were coached by Rudy Garcia, like like <laughs> he just got sacked. Like, I mean but like yeah. I remember, like that was the game. Like Sari, like I also remember, like especially during that time, and I think this should be brought up. Ronaldo and Sari did not like each other. There was oh yeah, they local, had a clash. They had a locker room drama. And I think that affected the whole squad as well. Like I personally believe, I remember that. I remember something like if a manager, like whatever it is, whatever you, whatever you're like a manager, or not a manager is put in power to make those decisions. However, with that being said, Sari was not getting the best out of Juventus by any means. Like they won the title. The only reason they won the title is because of quality. That's it. Yeah, They're pretty much just better. And even then, they nearly could have screwed up. Like that's the only reason. Like yeah. And I'm sorry, you can't be losing to Leon. Okay, I, I can kind of forgive IS to some extent. You know. Now I'm if they lose to like Manchester City next round, I'm like okay, Manchester City, Pep Guardiola, fine, no. fair enough. Okay, Leon. There is no Rudy excuses. Garcia, there is no. Really? There is no excuses. Like for Ajax, maybe you can make some kind of excuse. Like this, you cannot make any excuses for this. No, no, this not is not even on away goals. Like even on away goals, like even that game, like that second leg, you weren't even that good. It was Cristiano Ronaldo just doing everything. Oh, oh yeah, I remember Ronaldo scored a goal out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, because like before goal. that, it was just nothing. You weren't even creating much. Lee, in fact, Leon had better chances. Like you cannot do that. You cannot lose like that. Yeah, so um, so backtrack me for we should have actually talked about this. Yeah. So um, so Allegri um, did did you did he just like did they did he just like part what, what happened? Yeah, yeah. So basically, Allegri like this was kind of announced like actually honestly this was kind of like before even that season began. This was kind of like already were rumors that like this was probably going to be Allegri's final season, like the previous one yeah. you're talking about. It was like and during the season, you know, during the season when it was announced that Allegri was going to step away after the season. Like yeah. for a reason, he just thought that you know he just wanted a break. Like he already did everything yeah, he yeah. could at Juventus, so he felt like okay, you know what? I'm just gonna go take a break now. But the behind the scenes, though, the issue was also is that some board members were just kind of like there was some kind of talk about how like look, Allegri, he, he kind of didn't like how some of the signings. Like he wasn't against the Ronaldo signing by any means, of course not. He, he oh, yeah, of course, you know, but, but there were some other signings. And I think that's a big, he's like, he was kind of disagreed. So there was kind of like the relationship was definitely souring. But I think even if it didn't, I think Allegri would have left anyway, because I just think by that point, he was like, he kind of wanted to break, right? Sometimes, yeah. you know, he just kind of wanted to go out on a high, probably. You know, he's like, okay, you know, I've done my job. I've won the league titles here. Champions League didn't go as I wanted, got close twice, but just, but like, now I can just step away and Juventus can take it, can go in a different direction. That's kind of what their thing was. Yeah, but that and they, direction. I mean, we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> yeah, and then they hired Murzi Sorry because I because Murzi Sorry, of course, won Chelsea in the Europa League the, the previous yeah. season. It was a controversial Chelsea. hiring because Maurizio Sorry was like he bred like he he bleeds Napoli, like and I remember yeah. like him to go like I was already saying that this is probably not gonna fit because some managers just fit like it's like. It was almost like if Pep Guardiola managed Real Madrid, like that would just not. Oh work. no! Uh, what? Like that's kind of like how it is. Like that's how Napoli fans viewed it. Even Juventus friends were like, "Yeah!" And like okay. when they won, when Napoli got those ninety-one points, that was under Sarri. So Sarri did well with Napoli, but again, that's Napoli. This is Juventus. This is different. 
there's some there's different kind of expectations like and it just felt like the, there was going to be like a conflict of interest it always felt like that way and during the season there was a lot of drama and it just felt like it just they always felt it just felt like juventus just there was a kind of lack of like chemistry overall and just felt like individual brilliance was just getting them over them even like more than like it's under allegri whatever we might say allegri had that team structured in a way that he wanted now yes. if you agree or not with it that's different but he had sorry just and i guess in a way it's not completely sorry's fault like in a way like players just never like completely got behind him but at the same time as a manager you need to have control over your locker room and if you don't and obviously tactics and everything but if you besides tactics you also got to like manage your squad and he just didn't really do that. That's yeah. the problem. And, and I think part of the reason why, maybe you could correct me if I'm wrong, Juventus hired uh, Sorry because they, Juventus wanted to play good football. They wanted to play possession based. That's football. that's that was their thing. That was their thing. They were like, that's another thing. Like, the thing is, right? I always say, like, at so, at the end of the day, football is about results. Like, whatever you might yeah. like, it's about results. And yeah, results are the most important. Allegri, yeah, he didn't play the prettiest football at all, but he got the results. So at that point, it's like. If you're winning, like, yeah, they wanted to take the direction, like, sorry, you know, let's modernize Juventus. Like, let's play a different kind of, let's play this pressing high, high line, let's press, let's play this beautiful football. It just never really clicked. One, because they didn't have the players for it. Like, yeah, yeah of he, course. That's another, that's a big thing, though. They got so, they were so used to how Allegri played. Now you're suddenly making them play this different football. That's going to take a long time to adapt. That's going to, like, yeah. that's not going to be that easy. Yeah, I should sure about the suburb. What would you say like Allegri's style was at his first end? We'll talk about his first end. We'll I would say time. the thing is, it's a very rigid style. Like he obviously wanted people to defend, but it was about counterattacks. But the thing was different was, was that he was able to get the most out of like his in his first thing, he was able to get the most out of the midfielders that could like could create, like could make yeah. those passes. He was able to like put them in like, okay, you know, I want you to do the defensive work, but I want you to make these quick passes so that we can break, we can, and then counter on against teams and then score. That was kind of what yeah. he wanted. And yeah, it's a bit practical, but that it kind of worked. Like in the end, it worked. So nobody really complained. None of the UFS really complained. And see, and, and see and that's a difference. It's a huge difference. That's a huge, huge gap. Like you're going from like a counter attacking style to a possession base. That's very different. So it's yeah, gonna take I mean, that time takes time. like, that takes like two, maybe even three seasons to just completely like master. Like it's not that easy. To do that oh no it's not it's not easy and that's why you were really bad this season hey you look at the goal scoring target we were looking at this last season ronaldo scored 37. this is an even bigger like, gap now it's an even bigger gap like yeah Dybala, scored, like, Dybala got a bit better but here's the thing why he got a bit better is because like this style kind of suited him a bit more because like he was obviously getting a bit you know he was getting more of the ball however i remember this season also this was a season when paulo dibala's injuries also kind of began like Dybala and Ronaldo yeah. this season were just kind of like Karen because like Higuain, eight goals, like 11 goals in a competition, that's pretty bad. Like, especially yeah, that's pretty, that's bad. pretty bad. Banu yeah. Banucci is your top. Banucci and Ramsey and Delict is your fourth highest goal scorers. I mean, what are we even talking about, right? What are we even talking about at that <laughs> yeah. point? Yeah. Uh, the following, okay, so how would you rate this season? This season for me. I think it's a five. Five or six, maybe. Like, I. It's not a good season. Like they won the title. I get that they won the title, but he got sorry got sacked after the Lyon. Oh yeah, remember he got yeah, that was sacked. Like even the UEFA board were like, "Dude, what the hell is this? Like win the title? Like I like winning the title? Okay, like hey, that's doing that anyway. That I don't care if you're gonna win the title. What are you gonna do in the Champions League? You couldn't even make it past Lyon round of sixteen. Why should we keep you? I think that sacking was right. In fact, many UEFA fans would have said that. They probably would have won the title with an interim while all this was going on. It's like in starting instead of sorry, because sorry was just kind of like at some point the tactics were just Ronaldo, give the ball to Dybala, make sure Dybala gives it to Ronaldo and pray. That was basically what it was <laughs> later on. All right. Now and now Falling. this is the season where it was like, you know, uh, this is the official. This is the I mean, this season. I'll just give context. Yeah, they won't cop a I'll say this though, ironically, you offense, I think, prefer this season or the previous one. If you think of like, I'm not even joking. What? Not, they actually would say this was a better season than the previous one. And I'll tell you what? what. 
Like Pirlo, let's talk about Pirlo, right? Because he goes out that. Obviously, Pirlo, you know, former player, oh, did a lot for yeah. you. Obviously, his prime was at Milan. Yeah, but like, yeah, they, but UFNs backed Pirlo. Like, they were like, we're behind you, but let's be honest. This was also the club season, legend. Club legend. But this was also the season where Juventus's squad, we should look at the squad first because, oh my God, it's horrible. It's actually, look at that squad. Like, oh my jeez. Like, Sandro, Danilo. Sandro, this by this by this time, Alexandro was washed. Like by this time, he was washed. Danilo, Guardado, like Bonucci, Demi, like Whoa. look at that. Squad. Oh my jeez, Arthur. We all remember that. I <laughs> we all remember what happened there. That that trade with Barcelona, Pjanic, and all that. I mean, that was obviously an accounting trade. That was obviously an accounting trade. But like. Uh, he, never he never worked out. He never worked out. Like, look at that midfield, Rabiot. especially Ramsey, Arthur, Bentancourt, Rabiot, Bernardeschi. I mean, what are you supposed to do with that? Right? What? Look at that. Like, it's oh, and the, the attack. Like, Dybala that oh, season my. was just. I don't know. He was injured. Oh. He just could not win. Morata. They brought Morata back. Uh, nothing. Everything. Man, that's like really bad. That's like that squad. That attack like is garbage. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Besides I mean, Ronaldo. Like said, it was basically like Ronaldo. Like, look at Ronaldo scored. How many goals did he even score that season? Like, I yeah, actually, let's look at this. Ronaldo, Ronaldo scored 36. Look at that gap. Like, oh my jeez. I mean, like, and I think that season was just that was kind of like the beginning. Like that season oh was my. just oh my jeez, kind of bad, right? Like, and this was um this was Ronaldo's final season at Juventus too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah wow, crazy man, crazy. Okay, so let's talk about the let's just briefly touch upon the Copa Italia Super Cup real quick. Then we'll talk about the league in the Champions League. Yeah. So of course they won the Copa Italia. They won against Atalanta, and then they won against uh, of course Napoli. So. Right. Yeah, but now, so that that's good, I guess. But now the league, man, they lost the league title. And as an Inter fan, you must. Yeah, have I mean, been, this was a great yeah. season for us because we, we we actually started the season a bit badly, but then we just kind of kicked and we beat Milan three and just kicked it in the gear. From then on, it's like ah, ha, ha, ciao. I, I think this win, this win for me was when you Juventus. That was like that's my favorite game for that season because that game I remember that game exactly. Barella masterclass, an assist and goal like Bastoni making that pass to Barella. That game, I think that game was. We talked about the Milan and Juve game previously. I think this was the game. This was like, I'm right here. Yeah. Inter saying, I'm back here. And now you're going to go through the pain that I went through for so many years. I think that kind of, that was kind of the moment in that game. And also, correct me, and also, correct me if I'm wrong. This was like Inter's, I believe, first win against Juve in such a long time. I don't remember the last time it happened. Maybe you can fact check me, but I believe. Well, was 20, time. yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because last time we did it was in 2017 under Frank de Boer. I don't know how. I don't know what. How, how, but you know, that's how it was like, yeah, I remember, but that was like the last, but like this game, the thing with Inter is like every single time we played Juve, even when we were bad, it was always like, almost always like a close game. Like we just, we never like, because the thing is, it's just, it's a rivalry. It was still a rivalry at the end. Like it, it's a rivalry yeah. at the end. You got to just go, look at that. But they lost 3-0 against Fiorentina at home. I mean. At so, home. Oh my God. At home. Terrible. Like, yeah. Yeah. Napoli lost against Napoli. And I mean, like, yeah. Benevento? Benevento, yep. Benevento at home as well. AC Milan 3 0 at home. I mean, what that? Yeah. And remember, and remember, you very barely qualified for Champions League this season. Barely. The only reason why they qualified is because not, it's not even because of them. It's because it's Napoli, it's Napoli drew against Verona on final match day. If Verona, if Napoli won that match, you would have finished fifth. No, and we would just say that, that. Oh, <laughs> they would have came. They would have went to Europa League. Like, oh man! But wow. this is the season. This it was a chaos. The thing is, they won the Coppa Italia. They won the Super Coppa that season. They we got to talk about the Champions League also, right? I think. We yeah, we'll talk about that. But yeah. let me just let's finish this off. Man, you've a terrible in the league season. Because, okay, it's one thing to lose out the league title. Because I think many of us knew that, okay, this might be the season where they... Did you actually believe Inter was going to win the league this season? Yeah, I, yeah, I had a feeling that I think a lot of people predicted. Yeah, I, I thought that this is the season it's finally going to end. Because it just looked... Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, and you know what's interesting? Um, 
Conte started the Juve dominance, he ended the Juve yeah, dominance. Uh, yeah, it's always oh, that. Right. He ended it. Like, that's the way. It just had to be yeah. him. Like, it just had, it's not going to be anyone else. It was going to be me. But the reason yeah, is, yeah, we got I, Hakimi. Uh, the problem previous season was we didn't have a right wing back. We didn't have a good right wing back. Yeah. We got Hakimi. And from that on, it's like, okay, well, Inter just got a good right wing back. Well, boom. Everything just Yeah. And, and look at this, man. 91 points. 91 points. points. Yeah. That's the dominance. And see, the thing is, okay, Juventus, you're not going to Okay, if you're not going to... Okay, winning the league, losing the league is going to be bad, obviously. But at least compete for the title. Like, I, I, at They least were expected to at least, like, challenge the... They finished fourth. And I get that the points are very close. Look at that. Two points behind second place. Like, it was... Like, but what this basically means is, like, still, like... But look they're at that. Close. Look at that. They scored 77 goals, right? But look... Atalanta scored 90, 90 goals. Atalanta scored 90 goals. Like, it's kind of remarkable. Yeah. But, like, that yeah. season. But, like, Juventus, I mean, it, it was a poor season overall. Generally, just uh, poor in the end. Like, okay, if you're going to lose, I, see, the, I, I cannot accept losing the league title. But at least challenge for it. At least, like, don't let Inter win it by a landslide. Because it was pretty much a landslide. Yeah, they never challenged us. They never like, Milan was the, like, first place. I remember Milan beat us that season. They were kind of, like, there. But then they kind of fell off when we just beat them and we just uh, just uh, strolled from then on. But, like, Juventus never, like, they were never, like, like, look at that. Even in league positions, they were just never first. Never. Like, not and look at this. They weren't able to get a winning streak. They weren't able to get a winning streak. They only got a winning streak pretty much towards the end. They weren't even able to be Benevento that whole season. I just realized. They couldn't even be Benevento that whole oh, season. Oh, my jeez. Like, that, that's embarrassing. Yeah, it's that's crazy. Weird. And look at the amount of draws, man. Look at the amount of draws. And now we're talking about the Champions League. Beginning of the season, three draws out of four. Yeah, and now we're talking the Champions League. Okay, Champions League, they did amazing. They topped the group. Congrats to them. Barcelona pretty much gifted them to them. We pretty much self-imploded, so I don't really want to discuss about that, but they pretty much topped the group. We probably should have topped the group, if I'm being honest with you, but, you know, it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, that goal, I remember, right? That that Barcelona, the second game, right? The second game was, like, two penalties for Ronaldo. I remember yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, yeah. McKenny goal. Yeah, I mean that game. I mean, I remember the first game between you and Barcelona. Morata's three offside goals, three times. Yeah, three I go called offside. Like, but the thing yeah. is, let's be honest. I, I'm pretty sure as a Barcelona fan, you know, Barcelona that season also. I mean, that's a different. Yeah, we were story. terrible. Well, we'll but, save it for another time, but yeah, but <laughs> yeah, like, but, I mean, yeah. look at that. But like, obviously, I mean, both were expected. The thing is, both went through comfortably. But let, look at that group, like. Look, I'm Ukrainian, and I have a lot of respect for Dynamo Kiev, but, I mean, they won the title that season, but come on, that's not Barcelona, that's not Juventus. Like, and, yeah. I mean, that's just yeah. how it was, really. But, like, Juventus, yeah. I mean, they topped that group, but honestly, if we're being honest, that was less so Juventus topping it and more so Barcelona just handing it. Like, Barcelona were like, here you go, here's the first place for you. Take it. They just give <laughs> you it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty much true. And then the round of 16. Um, now, okay, to be fair. Okay, now, to be fair, <laughs> do we have to... I think this Porto side was better than the Leon side. I'll say that. Yeah. I think it was on paper. Yeah, I, it, I mean, it's still bad, obviously, because yeah. it was that first leg, and they made a horrendous mistake. I think it was, like, the first minute of the game, if I remember correctly. It was terrible. Yeah, but, then the first know, game, at least I remember the first game, they conceded, like, two goals. Like, both goals were from, like, right at the like, kickoff. Like, both halves kickoff. Like, I remember, Jeez. like, Benton Court gave the, the ball away for the first one. Like, Chesney could have done better. Like, the defense was there. And Porto, that game, were just better overall. Yeah, Porto. Yes, I just saved you. You probably should have lost that game by more. I remember it. Like, they probably should have lost that game by more. But he has to save the Yeah. But yeah. let's address the elephant in the room. Look who has not scored at all in either game. I think that's, you can see, like, no Cristiano, no sign of Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Like, I think yeah, this is wow. like for me one time where he just kind of goes. Like, I know he assisted Kiesa for the first goal, but besides that, he kind of goes this whole yeah. time. Yeah, like, and and to be honest, man, Porto were better, man. Porto were better, and I they remember were better. Like they, they, they like Rabiot's goal. I mean, Rabiot when he scored, I mean that was just throwing a k- kitchen sink at that point. Like just yeah, they, they were desperate. <laughs> they were yeah, desperate. Then, dude, yeah. I remember when Porto scored that free kick. I was going insane. I was like, oh my jeez, what? I was that so was surprised. embarrassing, though. That was like so embarrassing. Like, uh, you oh, yeah, yeah, like this, and just letting that go through. Like, what are you doing? And Chesney, and Chesney could have done better too, I think. Yeah, but like, what are you doing? Like, wow. we saw this also. Like, the thing is, this is the first time we also all of a sudden 
PSG did this against City that same season. I'm pretty sure in the set, first second semi final. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, can we not even do any walls now? Can we not? I think Chesney was like, but like, there's so many players there and just letting it go through you. It's not now. If this is like over, like it's just like, let's say it was like Messi's freak against Liverpool. Let's say then it's like okay, fair enough. Okay, then okay, yeah, like, fair enough. But yeah, no, but if it just goes messy, through yeah. you, like literally goes through you, like you're a ghost and just goes through you. Nah, what are we doing? Yeah, the, yeah, doing? The, yeah, the def- yeah, defending for that goal was uh, terrible. And I remember this was a season. I think this was Chiesa's breakout season, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Chiesa, the, Chiesa did everything that season. I also remember, though, Pepe, that game, that and then both games, like Pepe, that, especially oh, that yeah, second was I mean, the guy was time, but... Yeah, yeah that season, Chiesa. Was Chiesa was fantastic. good. Like, obviously, numbers-wise, you might think Morata... I'm not telling this. This is numbers. Morata, when it mattered, completely, like, non-existent. Like, yeah, he yeah. slapped Pepe. And yeah, and so this was Chiesa's first season, and obviously uh, he won the Euros uh, later that summer. So yeah, yeah but that, uh, honestly, now that I think about it, this was Chiesa's like only good season, like as a Juve player. If you honestly think about it, yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, I mean Ronaldo, man, thirty six goals, and still, man, the huge gap, man, sixteen goal difference. It just, but the thing is, like that squad, though, the whole squad around him, I mean, horrible, right? Like. Yeah, but well, again, I just don't think Ronaldo can go blameless, especially like against Porto. Like, I don't think he should even go blameless either. Like, he just he wasn't there. He Chiesa was the one doing the heavy lifting, and whatever my thing about Chiesa, Cristiano Ronaldo was brought in to win the Champions League. And yeah, by this point, the record was quarterfinals, round of 16, round of 16. That's just poor. Like, what, yeah, that's poor. Now, I want to ask you this question Is it as shameful to lose to Porto? Or is it like I don't know uh, personally? Like, I feel like in Rano's, I don't think it's shameful, but at the same time, it's Porto. Like yeah. at the same time, it's you should Porto. be beating them. You should be beating Porto. I just think you should be beating them. Now, I remember obviously I Porto, Porto lost to Chelsea after Chelsea won the Champions League. And I, again, if they lost, if Juve lost to Chelsea, then it's like okay, you know, I can I can understand a bit, even though I don't think that Chelsea team was that good, but that's a story for a different day. But, like, yeah, but yeah. losing the Porto, like, even as a neutral, like, you got to say, like, that's just not good. Like, that's poor. Like, you yeah. can't do Like, no. And, for, not. And, the, and the thing is, the Juventus standards are, if your standards to win the Champions League, you, you should be beating the non-top. The thing is, team. again, they have not made a single semi-final. No, forget about final. Forget about winning. They haven't even made a single semi-final with Ronaldo. I think that's a that's a failure. I think yeah, what is that's, point that's bad. Yeah, uh, now it's about Pirlo, man. Uh, obviously, the Pirlo thing is, I personally still think his sacking was a bit harsh. That's just my opinion, though. I think sacking him, like obviously, it wasn't the greatest season, but at the same time, it, it, the squad that he had, I mean, could have could he have really done much better? Yeah, like. Yeah, the thing is, like, I, I, the thing is, like, UVA squad was just really, really bad. Like, I, I don't think any manager would have been able to win the league. Even Allegri. Yeah, I, I mean, even Allegri. if you had Allegri. I think even, like, you had Allegri. Like, obviously, we're going to talk about Allegri once again. But, like, that team was just not good. Like, I do think they could have done better. But at the same time, if you look at everything, it's kind of like it was not. Like, they even did an all, all or nothing that season. That's how bad it got. Yeah. <laughs> they even did an all or nothing yeah. that season. And the thing is, like, the, the thing is, like, uh, Pirlo, like, uh, what is it called? He just didn't have enough experience, obviously. And I think this was a bit of a, un- a bit of a tough situation he just came in into. Like, like Juventus, like, said, here you go. This is garbage team. Just save us, please. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's like, like okay. here you go, have a garbage team. Oh, you want investment? Uh, how does uh, Arthur sound? How does Aaron Ramsey sound? Like, how does Ben Tancur sound? Like, like you just put him in a really uncomfortable situation. Like, like of I course, just he was think it have been fair. Like, I just think that yeah, he could have probably done better. But at the same time, he won two trophies. Yeah, I get that they're not high. But like, and I get the Champions League wasn't great. But like at the same time, let's remember this was Pirlo's first managerial exactly. job. Yes. So I just think at that point, it's like, I mean, it's his first job. Like it is a uh, it's his first job, and honestly, for a first job, like it's not sorry who had like loads of experience. This is Perlo, like as a rookie. I think for him personally, I don't think this was that bad of a season, like managerial wise. But I just think they gave him a really really bad team. I just think sack like I can see the sorry sack. Like I agree the sorry sacking. Like I think Aaron oh yeah, Aaron, sorry, that makes about. sense. This one I felt like this sacking. I feel like. Maybe you could have given him one more season, but at the same time, I just think 
like forcing Pirlo to be manager of this squad, you're just putting him like it's you're just basically telling him do an impossible. It just felt like that kind of a job. Like that's why yeah, yeah, like, most U fans are so like most U fans to this day say they shouldn't have sacked Pirlo for that. That's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like it's more Agnelli more than the board, uh, which the board is like a disgrace. Yeah, um, I mean, this yeah, isn't. I mean, like Paratici, like I remember, like we got Marota from them, like their sporting director. We got them from from Juventus because he fell out with the board, and I think the board definitely deserved to like have a lot of critics for this whole downfall. It's because the decisions that they made last few years, the recruitment, the every, like the wages paying, like some of the decisions they made, the coaching hires. It's all been a mess. I think this is a self-inflicted problem. It's like they kind of just did this to themselves, if you think about it. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. Now the following season, man. Next season. So a lot. We gotta we, let's talk about context first. Obviously, yeah. this was uh Ronaldo's first season, the first season without Ronaldo. And obviously Ronaldo's departure came out of nowhere. You know, obviously. Um, yeah. you know, and so like it kind of happened out of nowhere season. because he actually played first game of the season, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, first season. game of the season. Yeah, yeah, then of course. But then, it, but then, like, it was like obviously Allegri also returned, but this is the scene. But then United kind of like just rumors, and he was like, okay, I'm dipping. So they just sold him. The problem yeah. with that was they sold. The, personally, for me, selling him itself, like, it's not the the problem was they didn't replace him. Like, they sold him yeah. so late. Like, they did that they're no one. So because of that, the first season, the first half of the season, you were pretty bad. They were yeah, not scoring. First it was just pretty bad. Like they were, it was really, really bad. Yeah, and obviously, uh, obviously, I think Ronaldo wanted to go because you know he realized that okay, this Juventus team just isn't working. There's so much chaos with this team, so much off. The I field. mean, at that point, I can see why Ronaldo left, and that team was not going anywhere, right? That team was just yeah, not like, going anywhere. So yeah, and of course, and it's mentioned now. You're, uh, you're, you're, you're. I mean, if you look at context, context-wise, United finished that season second in Premier League. Yeah, they lost the Europe League final, but like. If you look at the way that like, they were bringing Sancho, they bring bringing Varane, and it's like home coming for you. Like, I, I feel yeah. like at that point, it kind of made sense for him to go back. It's like a re- you know, your old, your, your reunion, because, you know. It's like, you, you may as well, right? You may as well try. Obviously, United were getting Ronaldo to win the Champions League or anything. That was not even their goal. It felt like more like a reunion, like last dance. That was pretty yeah, much. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was more like an emo- it was, it was, So, like, it was why would emo- you stay at a team, a failed project, in Juventus, when you can just go back to your old club, where it kind of all kind of started, like they didn't start. Yeah, it was, like that's kind of like when it, Ronaldo name made a name for himself was at like United. So it kind of made sense for him. Issue was when Juventus did that so late. It kind of is it. It's kind of not their fault because you know uh, at some point, like he just it kind of happened late. But the problem is because of that, the first half of the season they suffered a lot. Yeah, the, yeah, they were bad. They were bad. I don't think they were used to it. And uh, one thing I want to say, it was like it was like an emotional return. You know, I think that was more of an emotional decision that you know what, I'll just go back to United. And obviously, Allegri came back, which was interesting. So, how did Juve convince Allegri to come back? Let's go over that real quick. Then we'll talk about the season. Um, I think that Juve fans, when Allegri came back, um, yeah. I guess, I guess, I guess it was, was it like what was it like what uh, Real Madrid did with Zidane? It was like you know Zidane left and it's like you know what we're really desperate. We need you to come back. We're just so terrible. We need your help. Like was it similar yeah. to that? I mean, yeah. I mean, or like I think that returning to Allegri, it just for me. I remember a lot of people when that happened. They were like a lot of people. Oh, Juventus will probably win the league again. I remember there was some shot. I'll say this. If you actually thought about that, like, I, I remember a lot of people thought about that. They were like, Juventus will probably win the league now, won't go back to it. That did not happen. Not even close to that. Like, that, that, that didn't happen at all. And I mean, it, it, and I mean, if you look at it, this is also the first season. And if you look at it, this was the first season in a very long time Juventus went trophyless. Since 10 11. Since 10 11, they have, they went finished trophyless. Like, even last season, even how garbage. They even were last sorry, season. they won the title, but the, this season it was pretty much a stamp that, yeah, now it's a rebuild time. Now it's oh, time I, to rebuild. Yeah. I forgot to ask. We should. We didn't rate last season. Uh, I'll give last season probably like a four. <laughs> really, I, I think five probably. Yeah, I'll probably. I'll probably give five. I'll probably so, give it, but like, yeah, yeah but like yeah. overall, but like yeah. let's be honest, overall, like this season, like this season though, I mean, this oh, season, oh, it was terrible. 
terrible. And they're Allegri, like, Allegri came back and you not even close yeah. to challenging or like not even close. Wow. Hey, look like, at this, man. Look at this. Let me see right here. Like, like wow. what is 70 points? Like six, just six points more than that. Lazio. Come six. On. Just six. So just seven over Roma. Like Dang. nine points. They're closer to fifth and sixth than they are to third. Like that is insane. And then yeah. obviously Inter and Milan, you know, in Milan on the yeah, title, Inter, like yeah, but they were not even close. They weren't even close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so really like this is like, a fourth place, but they're closer to four, fifth and sixth than they're to third. Like that's and, and you know. Yeah, and you would think, okay, maybe with Allegri coming back, Juventus would be better in the league. Okay, maybe not win the league, but at least challenge for it. They can't even challenge. They didn't. And, the thing is, they actually got less points in the league that season than they did in the previous one. Like oh, under wow. Pirlo, they got like I'm pretty sure like six, like six or seven to, or eight more points. Like what? Like, and I mean the squad. Like look at that. Like look, look how they started that Empoli. Listen to Empoli oh, in the first wow. game. Like, what like look at that? They couldn't even win. Like then they went on a run. Then they lost again. They began losing again. Then they went on a run again. They went you know, and then they went on a good run. But there's so many draws. This is when they got Vlahovic, but Vlahovic, you know, still adapting that season. Like look at that. They were just kind of just going on these runs, and then they lost to Inter. I remember that game. Oh my god, that game was different kind of Garbage. game. Pretty garbage, like I, I, I like garbage game at all. Like I didn't, I don't know even what I was watching that back then. Maybe like <laughs> look at that season. They were just, there was like never consist any kind of consistency. It was just back and forth, come yeah, whole season. Even when they were like in an unbeaten run, have their win, have their unbeaten games, they were draws. Like oh, I remember this game in particular, man. The the, the Roma man. Absolutely. Oh my god, dude, that oh. game, I. I don't even know how they won that game because yeah, it's a miracle. It's a complete miracle. And I guess sometimes I guess credit to them, but like, you yeah. know, let's be like, how, yeah. how am I? Yeah. And now let's look at the Copa Italia. So Copa Italia, they lost in the final to Inter. Okay. And to be fair, Inter is a really good team. So yeah, they only lost extra time. So I won't give them too much. I won't be that critical to be fair. Uh, and they lost to Inter both times. So. I mean, it's an yeah, yeah, yeah. Both they were lost to right Inter both. Like, I remember that game. That game, they actually took the lead because, like, first half we were controlling, we were dominating them. Second half, we just kind of to stop like doing it. Then they got a, we got a penalty, and then after that, Perisic masterclass in the final. You know, yeah. Perisic masterclass in the final. Yada yada yada. And the Copa Itali Super Copa Italia. Th this was close. But like, now, but like now, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, like Super, yeah, yeah. That's Super Copa. Yeah, I remember that. You know, that was like I remember that game. We dominated that game. That, that game, they guys, they just kind of sat back. But again, now the weird thing is, here's the thing: was this is like the season I would say you were like, okay, we're not gonna win the Champions League. Like, we're not, we're not gonna win the Champions League. We're not even gonna challenge. Like, let's just go over. Like, they topped that group. To be fair, but there's a big. There's an elephant in the room there, yeah, and I think it's in the red. Like, I remember that game, right? That Chelsea. Oh, my game. Jesus. oh my yeah, that was God. this was embarrassing. Like, even though Chelsea were European champions, four nil. Like, you can't. Yeah, it was yeah, a it insane. was it was a really really bad game. Like, it was. And really also, let's be real. Juventus got lucky to top this group because had Chelsea not it, it had beaten Zenit, had Chelsea Zenit, not bottled it against Zenit on the final match day, they would have finished. Second, you you First. will finish second in the group. Yeah, and and now oh, yeah. and now oh my god, oh my. this is this is embarrassing. This is extremely embarrassing. I can't give any passes. This, I, can maybe I, give feel a like, pass I feel like this is I, like this is where like there's no like even if let's say okay you might say oh you know Porto you know the free kick you know away goals Leon you know away goals you know that kind of thing Ajax this this one this one it's like nah. At this point, you just need to hold. Like at this point, you just need to hold it. Really, you you, you just need to just take it at that point. Like yeah, it's two penalties, but why is it two penalties? You gave them away, and it was like seventieth minute. They capitulated. They completely yeah. capitulated, and they didn't even deserve to win that game. They weren't even that good that game. That's the thing. Like, yeah, it was yeah. poor. Like, losing three nil at home to Villarreal. Villarreal, like they weren't even like I don't mean like like it was just. It, it was pretty embarrassing. I think I get that Unai Emery, you know, European competitions. I get all of that. 
but but that's really Europa League. Yeah, but like how? Like, yeah. Yeah, no, like yeah. And the thing and is, this looking- is I feel like this. I think overall fans. This was kind of see some fans like was Al was bringing Calabri back actually like. Honestly, if you look at it, was it really worth? Like, did it really like change much? I don't think it did. In fact, I think yeah, things are worse. Like, I understand why they did it, but yeah. you realize later in the season the guy is just very defensive, and this is where uh, Allegri started. To the thing is also like I feel like this is this I think exposed Allegri's weakness. I think because he tried implementing the same style, but here's the thing: you don't have prime Dybala anymore. You don't even you don't have prime Manzuki anymore. You don't have prime. You know, you don't have prime. You don't have Tev, Carlos Tevez anymore. You don't have Vidal anymore. You don't have prime Chiellini, prime Bonucci, prime. Like, you don't have yeah. that team anymore. Now, whatever team you have right now, this is not. This is like, this team needs work. This is a rebuilding team. And I'm sorry, but look at that. Look how many goals. 15. Like, Dybala that season wasn't even like, he was very inconsistent that season. Yeah, he got like 10. Like, he was pretty inconsistent that season. I remember, like, he wasn't really that consistent. Morata was just awful that season. Vlahovic was adapting. He started well, but then kind of, you know. And it's worse, but can't be too critical. Yeah. So. Moise Keen, I mean, I'm mean, yeah. talking like. But look at how Ronaldo leaves and look at their problem goal scoring. They could not yeah. score goals. Like, yeah. And uh, and this is the season where Allegri was really like he was stubborn. He was like, you know what? I'll just score a goal. He that just kept like he just kept using the same players. And this was also the season when Chiesa tore his ACL. And I think that uh, should yeah. definitely be it because I think that when that happened, what are like they were already struggling to score. But when that happened, it's like at that point, it's like yeah. I mean, their options before Vlahovic were uh, declining DiBala with injury problems. Got injured many times. Morata, Moise Keane. I mean, what are we talking about here? Like, yeah, this attack is horrendous. <laughs> this attack is horrendous. So, in that way, I'm, you know, in that way, you can say, okay, no, Allegri did his best with that because that attack, that, that, that's garbage. Like, that attack is garbage. And this squad overall is pretty bad. However, I just think for this squad, for that squad, they needed a project manager. They needed a manager that could, like, come in and, you know, instill his own philosophy. I think bringing back Allegri was just. For this squad, now, if you had like a better squad, let's say if they're like a good squad, then you know, sure, then I can see why. It's kind of like, but if it's like a squad that you know needs some work, needs some new. If this squad needed new ideas. I just think going back to Allegri was not really was kind of pointless. Do you think Juventus saw that? Oh, look, it worked for Real Madrid. They brought Zidane back, so maybe it worked for us. I was actually gonna think, think they- about that. I was gonna say that. I, but I just think like you can't just. It, the thing is, when Real Madrid did it, it was a bit of a gamble. Let's, I mean, it was like, it was a bit of like, I just feel like when Real Madrid did it, they kind of like had no choice in a way. I, I don't think many op- options were available. I remember what's funny though is Allegri was actually contacted by Real Madrid during that offseason before they got <laughs> Ancelotti. They were actually, he was literally agreeing, like he was literally going to go there. But then Juventus called out of nowhere, like, please, 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 please come back. Please save us. Like, we're we, we, we need you. We're, we're desperate. We need you right now. We're begging you. We're going to give you every kind of side. Just please come back. So remember, we got Ancelotti. To, for me, to this day, it's one of the biggest what ifs. Like, what if Allegri went to Real Madrid that season? That like, would have been very interesting. Like, I, I don't think the Champions League, I don't think the Champions League win happens. But yeah, but yeah, I, well, that, that's well, still well. like, but I just feel like going back to Allegri was kind of desperation. I was like, it was like, it was kind of like a. Where did your failures bring uh, bring you to? We brought they brought you back to me, but like, at some point, but like, was this worth it? I just feel like this, and I just feel like also for Allegri himself, I think returning to Juventus was a mistake. I think that because after this season, what initially like a lot of people still, a lot of UFN still say, you know, they respect him for like you know winning the titles and everything, but after this season. What was before, like, Allegri is an amazing manager. After this season, it just kind of got a bit sour. The relationship yeah, kind of just got sour. Le- his legacy tarnished. Legacy tarnished. Yeah, his legacy tarnished big time. And I think this season was the beginning of it. Next season, oh, my God, next season was just – and we're going to get into it. But, like, I think this season, kind of a pointless season. Like, honestly, I still feel like this season was a bit forgettable in a way. Like, it just felt like a fever dream. It just felt like kind of just happened. Like, Allegri just – you just felt like – Never like 
they just kind of felt like there, like never like really like I don't know, just kind of like a forgettable, a bit of a forgettable season for them, I think. Not many to like really talk about the season because like, there's not really any highlights to talk about. It's just constant frustration, I would just say. Like Yeah. Yeah, and let's give an overall rating before we move to the next season. I think I mean, uh, honestly I'll give it three. Three. Or three, yeah. Three or two like <laughs> a three. I, yeah. I, it was a, it was awful. Like it was disastrous. Yeah. Yeah, awful. The following season, the next season. This season. Uh, oh my. Now, before, like, I'm going to give context. I think this one definitely needs context. Obviously, I'll say this. We all know that Juventus finished seventh because of the point deductions. We all know that. It's because of the yeah. point deductions they got. That's why they finished seventh. If not with those, they would have finished top four. Now, here's the thing, though. I think they would have finished third over Inter because we lost to them both times that season. I think that, that probably is why. But at, again, but at, at the same time, like let's be honest, they were not challenging at all. Like, if you look yeah. at the league table, like obviously you can go to league table. I'm pretty sure they would have finished like that league table, right? Look at that. Like obviously they had point deductions. They were like ten. I remember first it was fifteen. Then he removed it. Then it got back ten. So like they would have finished like top four. I'm pretty sure they would have finished over Milan. Milan had a pretty poor season domestically. Oh yeah, like, Milan was dreadful that season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember one of the worst title defenses like in Serie A history topped by uh title defense next season season after but this season that season like but even with all the point deductions look at their like 22 wins six draws 10 defeats that's pretty 10 good. defeats yeah like, 10 monza defeats. monza you know what monza before that game before monza like they lost Monza could not win a single game that was our first ever Serie A win in history oh, my and they sacked they got a new manager and their first ever win in Serie A came against Juventus. That's in Barrett. Like, that's just crazy. Like, yeah, Milan, the Napoli, the Monza. 5-1, again. 5-1, Napoli 5-1, Juventus. That was embarrassing. Like, I'm, like, if you look at the way, they actually, like, won. Like, you see they, they had a win, right? Actually, I feel like you should scroll up a bit. Because, like, look at that. Scroll up. They won, like, every single game. They even beat us. I remember, like, Inter that season in Serie A. Dreadful. We were, like, really bad. We lost, like, 12 times in Serie A that season. Yeah, like, yeah. We were really poor in the series. So you see, but you can see like they kind of went on a run. You know, they won every single year. And it felt like they won like kids. But look at the wins though: one nil against Verona, one nil against Torino, one nil against Lecce, one nil against Cremonese and Udinese. It felt like a lot of one nils, right? It was like yeah. But then they were on an eight game streak without conceding a goal. They conceded five in one single game. Five. Yeah. In wow. I mean, and I mean after that, like again, like pretty inconsistent overall like they had these runs but then they went on these runs i mean look at that like and then they were Roma. like yeah i mean swallow swallow like, four empoli. one against empoli four what? one against empoli like it's poor i just think it was overall a poor season nonetheless like it was like even in Serie yeah. like yeah obviously the point deductions that's not on him but like Still, I just think it's poor. I just think overall, it's not good. Like, they didn't start the season. Like, they just... The thing is, this is also when they made, like, they got Bremer. They made some other signings back then. Like, but their team was... Delict left, but they brought Bremer, who I think overall probably has been better than Delict for Juventus. But, you know... Um, but I just think overall, like, I just think overall, it was, it was a... Like, their signings that they made, a lot of these signings... Not, oh, yeah. A lot of these signings failed. Paredes, Milik. Milik, yeah. Kostic, oh, Kostic first season was good. Second season, oh my god. Like, yeah. They eventually, yeah. Like, Pogba, I mean, that signing was just, that was nepotism at its highest. Like, getting Pogba, just he never even played that much that season. Like, he didn't even play. And then obviously the doping, you know, when he failed the doping test, you know, all of that, right? Like, it, yeah. A lot of these signings, but like, this has been a trend for them. This has consistently been a trend for Juventus. They always they just made these horrible signings and it just led to them having a very bad squad. Yeah, the Canadian left, think, led, led. and obviously Agala like left. in the they also yeah Dybala left went to Roma. Oh. Yeah, I think personally like I think that was just and the reason is that I want to say something about that. Um, the way Juve handled that situation was honestly disgraceful because the way like they promised Dybala the contract like what they really wanted to. And then when Dybala comes back for it, he's like, okay, where's my money? You you promised me. Like, oh, no, 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 no. We never promised you. You, you nah, no, nah, no, nah. we're not giving you. 
I remember one of the games, Dybala scored. He was like, he didn't even celebrate in like previous season. He was looking at the Juventus management and he was like, yeah, you know, you know, like I'll make sure. It was like almost like he was almost like threatening them. It was like, I just scored here. I'm doing everything I can. You're not even giving me what I want. So the next season, he goes to Roma. On a free. On a free. Right. Wow. This is a really bad man business. Yeah. I mean, but the way they just handled them, Dybala, like, he used to be loved. Like, I get that Dybala's tenure at Juventus didn't end how everyone wanted to end, like how they all wanted, thought it would go. But, like, still the way just ended was just pretty bad. Yeah. Like, then, obviously, Agnelli, he resigned, obviously, for the scandal. Yeah, all so. that, right. Yeah, it was just pretty, like, I mean. Yeah. They got a new president, yeah, I mean, all that, but like it, it was a chaotic season. But I think Serie A is one thing, you know. Again, like they 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 lost in semifinals, semifinals in Coppa Italia to Inter. I remember the Lukaku thing, right? You know when Lukaku was yeah. racially abused in that first leg yeah. and everything like that. But like, yeah, I mean, it was it was a chaotic match, really, really chaotic. Yeah, and uh, then obviously we got the uh, oh the, yeah, yeah, they weren't in the Super Coppa Italia. Oh god. Uh, Oh, oh my team. Oh jeez. You know I, what's I, funny? Their worst defeat scoreline wise wasn't even against Benfica or PSG. It was like that Maccabi Haifa. That game, that Maccabi Haifa game, that was when you you have a lot of you fans were like, yeah, no, nah, I agree. Yeah, no, it, it's you're out. You're out. It's, it's time. you're finished. Like it's just time. Like and a lot of you fans after the game, they were like, Yeah, nah, nah it, it's done. It, it, it's finished. Like Thank you for your did, but now you just go, just walk away. Like it was just that was the game. I feel like where UFNs turned on Allegri because from then on, it was just con- consistent criticism and everything. It was embarrassing. Just, it, it, the way they played that game was like a lot of also like PSG first game. PSG dominated. I don't know how that ended two one. Like they should have. Like the only reason PSG didn't win by more. I know, I'm pretty sure you've seen that clip where Messi passes to Neymar. I mean, to Mbappe, Neymar is free. Mbappe doesn't, you know, he just cuts back into 3-1, but he didn't. Like, you know, it, that was a problem. But, like, against Benfica at home, poor. They beat Maccabi Haifa at home, cool. Then they got, like, they played really bad in that uh, that away game. Like, it was very, very bad from Juve. Benfica, 4-3 Juventus. Juventus, they were losing 4-1. They only scored two goals, like, got desperate as hell. Like, look at that. Like, they just got desperate. Yeah. At that point. It was like, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Just throw everything at them. Like and we're getting streamed on, and then obviously the last game didn't even matter. At the end. Like they are actually, they, they were actually in the last game against PSG were a bit better. But who, who, how how does that matter? You're out already. They were already up. How does that even matter anymore? Right? Three points is on is disgraceful. It's, it's one thing to lose different. Two. They scored just it, nine goals. They only scored two more than Maccabi Haifa. Like same points as Maccabi. Oh Haifa. my right? jeez, this is a this is embarrassing. I just okay, it's like, one thing. Like, Maccabi Haifa won scored one more against Juventus. Like if they won three 0 against Juventus, Juventus would have came fourth in the group because of head to head. Oh my jeez, that would have been embarrassing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's one thing to lose to Benfica twice, and obviously that's bad. But losing to Maccabi Haifa is a new low. It is a new low. This that was like that was like that was like at that point. It's like yeah, I think at that point you fans were like yeah, we're finished. Like I think I was like it was it's finished already. Like it was pretty. Much. And then they went to Europa League, and, and they actually they, did pretty well. They actually did pretty well, but then they lost against Sevilla. And I remember that game. I remember that first second leg, right? That second leg, you took Sevilla the lead, but again, Allegri parks the bus. You know, the Ramon Sanchez Piscuan roars, atmosphere, and Sevilla go into their Europa League mode. And if Sevilla, and if you're going to let Sevilla go into their Europa League mode, at that point, you may as well just, uh, you know, you may as well just exit because that's just how it was. And I mean, to be fair, they did well in there, but at the same time, Juventus in Europa League, like at the same time. Yeah. What the yeah. hell? Like, yeah. Uh, to be fair, they actually did well in the Europa League, and they just ran into the they just ran into Sevilla. And Sevilla are like Europa League merchants, so yeah. <laughs> you know I can't really fault them too much for that. So yeah, I actually don't know if they would have won. I actually feel like they wouldn't have won the final though. Juventus, I don't think they would have been in Roma for some. I just feel like Mourinho would have probably got a better of Allegri. Than oh, Juventus was a Roma would have been an interesting. That would have been a great. That would have been an interesting final. Yeah, but yeah, I personally think Roma would have probably won though. That's just my. Thing. But yeah. Yeah, but yeah, this I mean, but I still overall this season again another trophyless season. Right. 
Vlaovic, 14, is your top That's speed. pretty. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Rabiot is your second place? Yeah, Rabiot, like, <laughs> Milik, Moise Keen, like, Di Maria Bremer, like, Bre like, it's poor. It's poor. It's poor. Like, yeah, this is really bad. It's really bad, man. And yeah, then obviously, um, yeah, I mean, this season, a se two seasons in a row trophy list. This is so weird. I haven't seen you. Like, when was the last yeah. time you went two seasons in a row trophy list? I don't even last time, but like, I feel like this season, though, I feel like the last season we were it as a three out of ten. This is probably even worse than that. This, I think this was even a worse, even a worse season because, like, yeah, they would have made top four point without point deductions, but let's be honest, they weren't even close. Like, they weren't even close. Napoli, so how did that, how, who cares? Like, at that point, like, they lost in Coppa Italia, got grouped in the Champions League, got grouped, like, on three points. Like, it's one thing to just get grouped, like, one point, you know, like, by one point, like, by three points. They only got three points. They only got three points, and they finished um, nine points behind. I'm pretty sure, like, Almost like ten or nine to nine points, like eleven. I know eleven points behind. Yeah, eleven points. And PSG. That's bad. That's and then lose to Maccabi Haifa. You know that's really bad. Like, I think the only good thing with the season is maybe the Europa League. That's but aside, but, but that's the only thing. But besides that, and, off and the field, I feel like the off field, off the field stuff also should be included. I mean, you know, yeah, at the end of the day, they yeah. just they know. The thing is, off the field stuff, whatever they might want to say about it, that's their doing. They cook the they, the the financial irregularities and everything. That was because they spent so much on garbage. That's basically what they they spent all that on garbage, and it just caught up to them, and it just got them punished. I think that has to be. I think it's a two out of ten for a season, if not even worse. Like I think it's really yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't. And the thing is, like the Europa League, as good as the Europa League was, you're beating teams you should be beating, like Freiburg, Nantes. Like these. I are mean, they beat Nantes, and then he lost to Sevilla. Let's be honest. We saw we talk about Sevilla being Europa League matches. Sevilla finished twelfth that season in La Liga. Like, this is not this is not the Unai Emery Sevilla. This is not the old Sevilla. This is this is a pretty bad Sevilla team. And I I I, I, I get that. I understand what you mean, but like I still feel like Sevilla true. and Europa League is still true. It's very true. difficult. So I I, I don't want to be too critical. I don't I, I don't the want to be too critical. Sevilla also beat Man United three 0 in the previous round, but so. it's Man United, so and <laughs> that's a but I, I just think that you were still poor that season. I mean, oh, yeah, you three made. points in Champions League and losing Yuma Cup. Yeah. Like that's, that's just yeah, 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 it's really bad. And as for the Europa League thing, they were beating about teams that they should be beating. So I'm yeah. not even giving too much pressure. Yeah, it's yeah, not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, obviously yeah. they got they got far, but at the same time they faced teams that you probably expect nonce like some of those kind of teams. But yeah, I mean, yeah. this season, I mean, well, one thing is that. Again, they came top four. They were actually, like, I feel like last, this is a hard one to dissect because there's, like, two, like, obviously, you in the first half of the season weren't actually, like, bad. They were actually kind of close to Inter, right? They were kind of, like, close to Inter. Like, yeah. you see, like, there was pretty decent run. Like, obviously. Yeah, like, I mean, other than, that, other than Swallow, well, well, everything was Yeah, good. although that Inter game, we probably should have beaten them. But, you know, there's that. But. I would say, but you can see, like, they were doing fairly well. They were doing fairly well. No European football to distract them once they were banned. That's the big thing. So it was kind of like, yeah. But. Yeah. But. Oh, geez. Like, but this wow. this Empoli game was kind of like, Empoli game was kind of like, okay, well, whatever. But again, it's Inter. We dominated them. And that's, uh, and after that, after that. Oh, this my is geez. Look at my draws. One of the worst. Look at that. This is quite literally one of the worst runs of form I have ever seen from a like Juventus. Historically speaking, this is one of the worst ever runs in second half of the season. Look at that. Six draws. Three second half of the season from January onwards. Three, three victories in Serie. Three, just oh, three. Geez. Like uh -huh. that, I think that's disgraceful. And look at those victories. 3-2 against Frosinone if relegated. That's not even comfortable. You're at home and you're only winning 3-2 against Frosinone. That's well, really bad. 2-1 yeah. against Napoli. You might say, oh, it's Napoli. Napoli last season. To lose to that Napoli side last season, that is already disgraceful. To lose against and that then, team. And then they beat yeah. Monza on final match day. Who cares? Like, yeah, the thing is, this like, is really bad. 
look at that. They, they drew so many games. They they lost like they didn't even lose that many games, but they drew so many. Like and like it, it, there were some games they probably should have lost. Also, like I think three points. It's like it's seventy for that's 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 really. I mean, they were on like the fact is they fell off. I feel like obviously on surface it might be like you know it's only five losses. It's only yeah okay. They were look at that second run of half the season run in Syria. They that's fourteen crazy. draws. Yeah. I think that's really bad. Like that's really really bad. Yeah, yeah, it's really really bad, and um, I just think it's really really bad. And yeah, and obviously, um, and then obviously they won the Coppa Italia. You know, it's not three seasons trophy list, which would have been embarrassing. Um, so yeah, they did win the Coppa Italia, so it's kind of like you know, hey, we won the Coppa Italia, so you know, we are actually maybe a good team. You know, we're, yeah, I know we're, we actually won the Coppa Italia, so we know why not? Like, let us cook. <laughs> like let us cook like Coppa Italia. It's just, it's salvage. Like they won the Coppa Italia, which is yeah, good. Like they beat Atalanta in the final, to be fair. So that's good. Like, but but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. They did win the Coppa Italia. So I guess in a way, if this was a better season than last, but here's the thing, again, second half of the season run was awful. And they had no European football. They had no European yeah. football. That's also an like, like, you, like, you, you have to be you challenging. take that into context, like third place. Like overall, you might say, okay, no European football, second half of the season meltdown. I feel like if you take that into context, it looks, it's actually, you know, worse than it actually looks. If that makes sense, I just think, I just think overall, I just think overall, it's a poor season. I still think it's a poor season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a poor season because Juventus should have been a challenge for the lead title. In fact, they probably should be able to win it because they have no European football. Yeah. yeah, they should have been challenged. I don't think they would have won. I had them like challenging us. I just don't think they would have won us because I think Inter, I think, overall had more quality. But, but they didn't like they were challenging, but then they just completely like they collapsed completely. And I think that's disgraceful to a point where they finished below Milan and purely got sacked. Purely got sacked after the season. Alevi got sacked yeah. after winning the Copa. I think when they sacked Alevi after winning the Cup, I think Cup final, I think that's. Nah, like I think that's a bit that's a bit unprofessional. I think I think like if you're gonna sack Allegri, I think it should have been done at the end of the season. I just did not find the timing correct. Like I just think he won the cup final, let him finish the season, and then if you wanna sack him, sack him after. That's yeah. I just think yeah. Yeah, I, I obviously he needed to go, man. He needed to go, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. It, it's just it's poor. I just think that overall Yeah. I mean I hope that they. I mean, I I really hope that. Not not hope, but I mean, I just think that Ale, I I just think that overall the season was you know it's just it wasn't a great season still like it was just, and I just think overall it's a combination. I just think overall this season was just you know it's just filled with drama filled with. You know the way that everything just went down the no. I just think overall is a poor season still because you had no European football and didn't even challenge for a title. It just melted the heart. Like it, it was a poor season. Yeah. So uh, let's let's do a let's do a rating. Let's do a player. Let's do a rating real quick for the season, and then we'll we'll kind of look ahead real quick to twenty four twenty five. Give her. So I think rating for the season. Um, I think overall, you know, uh, like four, four, Maybe four, I guess three. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know. I'll give it a three. Yeah. Yeah. Now Juventus have finally hired a good manager, Thiago Motta. This yeah, is a good Thiago manager. Motta obviously as an Inter fan, it kind of hurts because he's you know he was a former Inter player, but at the same time Conte was a former Juve player, and former manager, and manager. So you know at that point like you know, it, it's whatever. Yeah. But obviously they beat Como three 0 on his game, but against Como, so you know we'll see how it goes. I think I think they're gonna do okay. I still don't think they're gonna win the league. I think it's a bit too soon, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But they should at least Juventus, we drew against Genoa first game, but Genoa is in a, a way Genoa is pretty tough. Like we have not won their like last six games. Like we have not won yeah. a game in at Luigi Ferraris in last six games. So that's a different that's a completely different matter. Yeah. So Yeah. yeah I, I mean yeah, they should be able to at least challenge for the league. I expect top four. And for the Champions League, they should probably at least get quarterfinals. Or yeah. Maybe round 16. 
Yeah, I think they should have at least got her like it. I think they should have got... Yeah, I mean, they should get Champions League. I think I predict them to get second, but I think, you know, I think overall, you know, we'll yeah. see how it goes. But I think there's like, there, it's a long way. I think it's a, it's a long way back for Juventus. I think it's a long way back. I think it's going to, like, there's going to be a lot of like, I think they're going to have to do their, I think it just depends on how things go. I think it's a long yeah. way back for Juventus. Yeah, and one of the things I forgot to mention this uh, earlier is that the midfield you've had has been really bad over the years, like Rabiot. Then you've had like, uh, like uh, who else in the midfield? I forgot the other guys' names, like Ramsey uh, and all Benta, that. Uh, Benta or Ramsey. Now it feels like you may actually have good players. Yeah, but that's the only thing they rectified. They haven't like they're attacking. Like, they're trying to get rid of Chiesa, and the way they're treating Chiesa right now is pretty questionable, in my opinion. I think the way they're just trying to force him out. They sold yeah. Matias Sule to. Uh, Roma, their attack looks a yeah. bit bad. Like, their attack is a bit, you know. Yeah, yeah, their attack looks bad. Yeah, so. And, we'll like, see what see, they rectified their midfield, which is good. But at the same time, defense could still be do better. And, like, the attack especially. I mean, the attack especially. They got a better, they yeah. got a new keeper, Gregorio. But I think overall, you know, I think we have to see. I just think that, I just still see think that there's a long way back for Juventus. Yeah, anyways, let's quickly round off here. Man, it's an hour and 30 minutes. Jeez, this is yeah. a really long video. Wow. Uh, just rounding off here real quickly. Uh, so basically, my overall, uh, to give uh, to give a quick summary, I think Juventus basically over the last couple of years, tra bad transfers throughout the throughout the seasons, uh, over-reliance on Ronaldo, and pretty much the board just messing up, man. That's pretty much the main summaries. Would you agree? I think that are so. I think that overall, I think Juventus. I mean, I don't think they're gonna win the title this season. I don't think. I don't know it. Um, no, no, but like, give me a summary. Give me a summary for the downfall. Like, what's like the main reason for the downfall? Well, I think what you look, what to look out for is how they're gonna do in Champions League because obviously nobody's expecting them to win it or really do anything. But like, obviously, we have to still see how they do because last time it was not good. Obviously, there's a group change, group, uh, format change. I think, you know. Probably do better in league than last season. Get more points. You know, just I think UFNs just kind of need to be like in a way like they should like they should be like they should just like what I feel like might happen though is how patient will the Juventus board be? Like how yeah. patient will they be? That's the question. Yeah, because Malta is a project. A pro, Malta, Malta plays good football with Bologna. Now he's a project manager and he'll play like he'll be more more modernized. It, it's gonna be kind of like what Maurizio Sarri did. But just a better yeah. version of Maurizio Sarri, if that makes any sense. Yeah, because I think he's going to do better than Maurizio Sarri, although I don't think that's – I feel like that's not really, you know, hard. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. if you saw, like, how they did with Pirlo, if you saw, like, how Pirlo went – how that Pirlo situation went down, you know, how Pirlo got sacked and everything, I mean, I feel like when Pirlo got sacked, like, they were kind of like – we all thought that maybe Pirlo was going to be that project manager, you know, that was like, you know, probably could have taken them, but like they, he, they, he won trophies and they still didn't put faith in him. So I feel like yeah. at that point, I like, if you're not going to trust Pirlo in your club legend, I feel like if Mota does not deliver, I, I can see a world where he gets sacked. I can see it. Yeah. That'd be really harsh. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. But yeah. Hope you guys did enjoy this uh, video, man. Very long video. If you, get, if you went to the very end, man, shout out to you guys. It was a big serial video. Thank you, Doodle, for doing this. And guys, if you guys want, there's an official Discord server. I'll leave a link. Uh, Doodle, can you send me the link? Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below yeah, for yeah. you guys. And hopefully, big yeah. Serial. I mean, we're going to have more conversations once, you know, once more football in place. But yeah. yeah. As an Inter fan, honestly, you know, obviously, I've tried my best to give a very objective you know, answer to all of this. So we're, we're going to have to see really just how it goes. Like, but Juventus, they're, they're a big club. So, you know, they're, they're a massive club. You know, they saw that influence in Italy. It's just the way they've been run, you know, this long. I just think that they kind of had the, they had the tools to like, I know that obviously that every, like there's a saying that every empire eventually falls, but I just feel like the way Juventus fell, I just feel like they kind of did it to themselves. And I just think yeah. after they've just dug themselves in such a large hole that now it looks like it's like they have to crawl out of it themselves. 
Yeah, yeah the bad tran yeah, the bad transfers, Oberlein to Ronaldo. That's that's pretty much the main summary. Yeah, I mean, not trusting your players, like not trusting like the manager, like not giving him actual like good players. Like yeah. it's I feel like it's a I feel like the overall like the way everything went down, I personally think that if Ronaldo yeah, like I think we, I mean, we'll have to see. I believe we'll have to just see how it goes. It was just, we have to see. Yeah. So please remember to like and subscribe, of course. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out. Peace.